Welcome to Beelzebub Cottage, Ireland. This is the home of Goddess Permaculture, a movement that has evolved from permaculture itself. And this is Beelzebub Cottage on the very first day that I saw it. I didn't do much to change the cottage. It still has the same roof and the same windows and the same door. I took off the porch and I built a wooden porch, which is more sustainable. And I put double glazed panels into the windows. I kept the windows because they were hardwood, probably from some bereft rainforest. This is the driveway looking down from the cottage again on the first day I saw it, which was around the 1st of May, which is why it's called Bealtaine Cottage. I put in a gravel driveway and um, planted, and I planted, and I planted, and I stopped counting at 1,100 trees. So you'll see the regeneration and the beauty of a woodland garden. But most importantly, the resilience of Mother Earth, that when you do make the effort to regenerate, that amazing things begin to happen. As you can see, I spent quite a few years strimming and mowing and keeping the rushes back while I planted. Hugely important. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a plan. I simply looked at the cottage. I looked at Mother Earth and I thought, you poor, poor thing. I will plant you on this poor, north-facing land that the EU describes as marginal. Marginal? <laughs> oh, gosh, no. Some more Akalicha down in this corner. It's evening time. Um, I think it's about half seven or eight o'clock. So this video will be uploaded quite late into the night, I think. Depends how long it's going to take to load. Oh, look at this Akalicha. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So the drought continues, I would say unabated, but there was a, a little sprinkling of rain this morning. I mean, it was literally a sprinkling. And I look up longingly at those dark clouds and say, please rain on me. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's going to. The forecast isn't very good. <laughs> Normally in Ireland, that would mean it's just going to rain and rain. But when I say the forecast isn't that good, it means there's going to be yet more sun and more sun and no rain. But I live in hope. Okay. I've really just got to show off these figs here at the moment because they're just um, quite wonderful. And there's masses of them, as you can see, even down in the lower branches there. Yes, it's all looking good. And my little tree nursery has expanded a little bit more. I have been repotting. And I found, of all the little ash trees that I had growing, I actually found one that didn't have any signs at all of um, the, um, the chalara, the, the virus that's killing these ash trees. Yes, and I've done a video on this before and I'm quite cross about it because it's the result of monoculture greed that that's happened. <sighs> but, let's be positive, because the sycamores are thriving. The sycamore and the birch are thriving. I've got some wonderful birch here. Look at this one. And these are kind of a, they started life off just a wee bit stumpy. So they're going to be beautiful shapes. 
and I even, when I was walking around, found another little one, look, that I just pulled up ever so gently and potted on in this little pot. So, and there's the oak tree. Finally, finally, with a good mantle of green. crazy dog. Oh, I feel a few spits. I feel a few spits of rain on my hand. I'm going to try and keep everything cross now. Can you see all the beautiful cherries forming on the cherry tree? Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That was quick work, wasn't it? Look how dark it is in here now with the, the leaves out on the trees. This is one of my favourite trees here. The beech tree. I love these trees. They remind me of all the beautiful artwork in some of the old fairy tale books. You know by the artist Arthur Rackham. Absolutely beautiful. This have twisted and gnarled and very much alive, but off another world. with you now because it's it's so energetic the growth on this fairy thorn look look isn't this amazing look at this look there are going to be branches just growing up towards the sunlight and all across the stems, every single stem has signs of life. Some only tiny, like this one over here. Others quite incredibly fast. It's my greatest delight to see this. Look.
Now for quite a few years I had no idea what this plant was. I knew it was a plant that someone had brought to me years and years ago and it was in a tiny pot and I planted it down here and it was only recently that I discovered the name of this plant and it's called, and I think I've got the pronunciation correct, Rogersia and it's spelled R-O-G-E-R-S-I-A and it's wonderful because it seems to really like the woodland and yet when I planted it I never even thought what kind of conditions does this plant like? I thought, oh, I'll plant it here. <laughs> there, was, there was a wee space and I just thought, I'll plant it here. And look, look how it's inhabited the space. Isn't it beautiful? And in this little kind of triangular piece of land, look, I put um, a green, let me see now, trying to remember if this was a green beach. Um, or is it called something else? I think it's a green beach and it's kind of struggled a wee bit but it's well and truly settled in now. This little area's got a good mix of trees. It's got willow, sycamore, which appears to do really well here. There's two sycamore there. Um, horse chestnut, which is this one. ash, which I think the ash are all dying out here in Ireland. So we just have to go with that, I suppose. Um, not too sure the name of this one. This one's Rowan. So I put three Rowan in here. You can see one, two, three. There's a wee Sitka spruce there. There's also a tiny little Although growing quite fast, sycamore. And then there's all different kinds of willow. And I think this is, um, oh, is this, I'm not too sure, this could be a goat willow. There are over 330 different varieties of willow. But you can see now how dense this little woodland is fast becoming as the trees grow. And of course there's flowers up there on the rowan tree. So they all have to compete and sort of grow up towards the light. But I think they're doing very well. And especially that Roger Sear over there. This is the little stream bed that runs along through both the, um, both the ponds. This of course carries the water from the spring well. Now the spring well hasn't dried up completely. It's still sending water out. You can just see it there. And it is flowing, continuing to flow. But best of all, the lower pond has maintained its water. It hasn't lost any of it. I'll take you down there and show you that now. So this is what a baby woodland looks like. Well, more of a teenage woodland now, I expect. It being 16 years old. Though not all of it 16 years old. Only some of it. Some of these trees are as young as a year old. You know, and the shrubs and the cuttings and all the different plants that I've put in. There's a beautiful scent down here. Look, it's coming from the hawthorn there. Here I am, sidetracked again. Look at this beautiful hawthorn. Look. And the flowers all over it. These are the true mayflowers. The may blossom. Look at all the little insects in there. See? So they hold a lot of life. A lot of life. Oh, and the scent is beautiful. Very good for the heart to breathe the scent of these flowers in. I'm going to have a few good, good snorts of this. Absolutely. This is magic stuff. Oh, it's wonderful. 
apparently the scent of these flowers opens the left ventricle in the heart which is really good for your breathing You know, you can feel it doing you good. There's another wee oak tree over there. So this is one of the wilder paths. Still a little bit of open, open meadow here. And of course all this is the beautiful meadow suite. But anyway, I'm going to turn round and go back and head down towards the lower pond. Yeah, I could smell like a beautiful mixture of aromas and this is one of the Bramley apple trees planted down here because I have fruit trees and nut trees all across the woodland gardens now this is absolutely covered with blossom I can barely get to that tree now I will have to cut a little path through to it sometime in the autumn when the apples are ready. See? Oh, what a gorgeous scent. It's beautiful. It's going into the stream to try to get some water. Here I'm plodding along through some water. I think he got some. There's another beautiful horse chestnut. There's my neighbour going past on his quad back. And just hear him. So look. I never ever thought I'd see a full pond during such a severe drought. But it just goes to show what can be done. And the life they're in. Jack, if only you knew how many people across this world loved you. But then I think you do know, don't you? Yeah, I think you do. You know an awful lot more than what we ever think you do. Hmm. See how massive some of these trees are now. Haven't lost one of them during this drought. I think that's a really good sign. I 
And unlike so many of the monoculture woodlands and forests, you know, there's no real dryness in amongst the trees here. The woodland floor is, as you'd expect it to be, quite damp. I think trees are the ultimate caretakers of Mother Earth in the absence of the human species doing their duty of taking care, which we failed miserably in. The trees, the trees do this, you see. And that's why we have to plant more. Some of the trees now rising up behind the cottage on all sides. to share something with you. Something that many, many people will just scorn and say that's nonsense. But it's an understanding that I have grown to accept because it's the only thing that keeps surfacing in my head all the time. And especially as I walk around and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking. And it is simply this. Because you see so many people question what's our purpose? What's our purpose? And then so many people say oh we're just a blight on Mother Earth. And so many people who who really are still stuck in that uh, sort of evangelical biblical mode of belief in the end times are almost cheering on the end times regardless of what they say many of them say they're not but actually they are I hear them and it makes me feel sick this this is what I've come to believe I've come to believe that the human race is a vital part of the evolving ecology of Mother Earth. Now I'm not asking you to accept or agree or disagree with what the human race has done. I'm very well aware of all of that. But I understand the Earth to have evolved us up to this point in time where she can see herself through our eyes. We are her mirror. She can look into the mirror and see herself. She can look through our eyes and see herself. And if what she sees is pleasing to her. She brings more and more into the picture. Her energy is so charged and so so happy and so joyous, so joyous that she puts even more magic into the landscape. I mean, this can be the only reasonable and rational reason why things are like they are here. Because I am, at the end of the day, only one person, only one woman doing this, and yet the abundance is beyond explanation. I would, I would simply 
defy any biologist or envir any envir environmental scientist to explain what's happened here. So therefore I look for an explanation. And the only explanation that makes any sense to me in my heart is that she's looking through my eyes. She's seeing this and she wants more. She wants more of this. And so she brings forth more. Does that make any sense to you? Because you see, it makes perfect sense to me. It really does, it makes perfect sense to me. I am forever looking for a rational explanation for things because sometimes the magic frustrates me. I'm, I'm very eager to find out more. I want to know more. I want to see more. I want to experience more with Mother Earth and so therefore I'm always looking for an explanation that will allow me to move forward, to edge forward a little bit more in my understanding of what all this is about. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say really. And if in response people say, crazy mad Irish woman, silly woman, she doesn't know what she's talking about, how bizarre, how irrational, I would say, instead of saying those things to me, offer me an explanation. Offer me another story. Give me another story. Blessings to you all. Beatinal Cottage books are printed here in Ireland, not offshored or uploaded to Amazon or any other corporation. They're printed in Ireland and they're posted from Ireland. And I do all the work here myself. This is best practice permaculture. This is not being a hypocrite and saying I practice permaculture and then have my books printed and delivered by Amazon. It's truly local, 100%.